Father God, I pray that you would just continue to bless us, Lord, as we start our service this morning. I pray that you would just continue to touch your people, Father, wherever they are right now, Lord Jesus, through this life. Father God, I pray that you would just touch them with your word, touch them, Father God. Change us our change our mindset, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Make us strong in spirit, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just bless our service this morning, Lord. Just bless us, Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat>
worshiping through this life right now, Father. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your love and mercy, Jesus. I thank you for your mercy, Father. Hallelujah. Just continue to bless us, Lord. I pray for your protection, Jesus. I pray for your healing upon this nation, upon this world, Father. Amidst this pandemic, Father God, I pray that every single person will be healed, Jesus. And that this virus will be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We believe in you, Lord Jesus. We believe in your power and your miracle, Lord Father. Hallelujah. Just give you all the praises, Father God. Just bless us, Lord, as we as we continue our service this morning, Father. Continue to bless us, Jesus, through your word as you use your servant, Father, to speak forth your word to us this morning. Hallelujah. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Shikena. Wherever you are, uh, you can check our uh, church account through Facebook, uh, the flyers through WhatsApp. Let's give continue to give to the Lord because God and God promised that he will keep us when we give because giving is really one of the things that closes in the heart of God. God is a giver and we learn to give because the Bible says God gave and God gave his only begotten son. God is a giver and those of us who believe in him and that is the spirit that is moving in our hearts. Amen. And um, we give because we love him. We give because we know that God promised in his word and God will keep his word. Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I uh, believe that God also will give you breakthrough and bless you in your finances, in, especially in this time. Difficulties. Yeah. Nothing is impossible with God. God prosper Isaac when he moved in that land where nothing grow, but the Bible says he sow in that land and he reap even greater things there. All right, God can make things to grow in the desert land. God can, you know, provide a supernatural uh, provision in our life. And I do believe that because it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. God, Jesus multiplied the bread and the fishes. God provided uh, Elijah with, the, with food from the raven. You know, God can make a way. But there is a principle that we need to keep and follow, especially in the Word of God. The Bible says we need to keep the word. We need to obey the word. So giving is part of the uh, practice that we use because it's in the word of God. And God is faithful to his word. Say amen. 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 So let's pray for the offering wherever you are. Remember our giving, a tithes, an offering. Let's bring it before the Lord today. Lord, we pray that you bless our giving and bless the offering. Bless every hands that give, we pray. We thank you. We believe in your word. We believe in your promises. We believe that you are so good in our life. Even in these difficult times, we believe that you are there for us to provide for us and to keep us in your presence. We love you. We bless your name in Jesus. Precious, precious name we pray. Everybody say amen. amen. So let's give to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Today I want to continue uh, a little bit. I will not keep us long. Uh, yeah, a lot of people love uh, to preach long and all. I mean, if we are in the church, maybe uh, I can consider that. It's no problem, but we are live. So a lot of people, when they watch uh, video, they don't love like to watch long uh, videos or long session in the video. So uh, we try to keep uh, the most maybe 30 minutes, yeah. Uh, but plus our prison worship announcement and also it covers uh, more maybe 45 minutes. Sometimes I reach one hour also uh, overall. But anyway, this is Sunday. This is worship day. It's not only to to preach. You know, some somebody suggested to me, you know, to uh, I mean to take out the worship and all, just focus on the word and all. But this is a Sunday service, so we want to give you the full uh, package of the service we have. You know, some announcement, we have offerings, you know, we have the word and we pray a little bit sometimes. But this is Sunday service, so we still have a feel of a Sunday service, even though you are sitting in your house, 
you are there and we are here, but we are having this Sunday service. It's a, it's a worship day. It's a worship day unto the Lord. It's a Sunday. If you just change that S-U-N to S-O-N, it's a Sunday. It's the day of the Son of God where every Christian gathers together. Hebrews chapter 10, 25, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of the brethren together. Don't, 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 you know, we, we must worship God. We must worship God. Uh, we must worship. There, there is a day that we gather together. There is, there is a day that we sit together, you know, with family, with, with the congregation, with fellowship or whatever group you have there. But we sit together. There is a day that the, the believers, the Christian gathers together. And that is biblical where everybody worship the Lord together. Yes, you can worship God in your house. Yes, you can worship God alone, but there is in the Bible it says, Do not forsake the assembling of the brethren together, where the believers gathers together as a church to worship God and to honor God by giving that day unto the Lord, lifting God in their hearts, you know, you know in singing, in worship, in gathering. We worship the Lord together. So we want to give you a feel of a Sunday worship. It's a Sunday service. And of course... Uh, we spend more time in preaching the word and giving you the word. Praise God. So I, I've been, this is the, the third Sunday. I've been speaking about building a strong spirit in difficult times, which is very important. But, but before I go into this again, uh, this is part three. Uh, before I go into this, building our spirit to be strong, it's not overnight. All right. It's not overnight. I, I can speak like this and I, I, I can live like this today because of the investment and the time that I, I have spent, you know, in my Christian life, uh, in prayer, in studying the word, um, to, to, to build a regular uh, quiet time with the Lord, spending time with God, you know, to, to have the word of God every day in my life. You know, that, that kind of lifestyle. It's not a touch and go Christian lifestyle where we only remember Sunday. And, and a lot of Christians, they don't even come for Sunday service in Sunday church. You know, they just say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but they're not living it. Like the book of Titus says, they profess to know God, but in words they deny Him. So, but, but the investment that we put in our life, in a way that, when I receive Jesus, when I believe in Jesus, that I surrender with Him, and I surrender my life to Him, and I decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. We sang that song before, uh, last time, that's old song. I decided to follow Jesus, and we walk with Jesus, and that, that is what I did. I walked with Jesus from 16 years old, that's the time that I really gave my life to Jesus, coming out of the religious life, coming out from the religious routines and, you know, experience the reality of God in my life, the, the reality of, of a Christian walk, what is a Christian life. So from 16 years old, I decided to follow Jesus. And this is the lifestyle that I've been living. And um, until I went to full-time ministry, I've been living like that until today for these many, many years. So in a way... My spirit man was developed. My spirit man has been built. So building a strong spirit, it's not overnight, but it takes time. It is a lifestyle that you have to choose. It is a lifestyle that you have to make a decision that I am a Christian. I'm a, a believer of Jesus and I will live my life in this way as what the Bible says. I will follow the Bible, I will follow the, 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 the Christian teaching as much as possible. Maybe not perfect. I don't think there's, there are people out there that really live a perfect Christian life. We have weaknesses, but as much as possible, we, we follow God's word. We obey Him. We live with Jesus every day. That I am a Christian. No question about it. No doubt about it. I am a Christian. I live my life as a Christian. That is what I am. A Christian should pray. A Christian should read the Bible. 
A Christian should have a time with God every day. A Christian live in the presence of God every day. That is what we are. And that is what, how, do, how we need to live our life. And we are there. We become master. We master this kind of lifestyle. We have learned how to live as a Christian. And uh, you know, th there is no question about it. And if you live like that, you, you put your life in that kind of lifestyle and you live like that for the rest of your life i am sure that your spirit man will be built strong but if you don't live like that you know you just remember god when you are in trouble a lot of people when they are sick when they lay down in the hospital then they will cry oh god help me call the pastor call somebody to pray for me you know and they will pray every day a lot of people, they, they only remember God when they have problems. But that is not living a, a Christian life. We need to live with God every day. That is how we build our spirit. And what I'm touching here is just a guidelines. That we, what we need to do. How important it is to build our spirit life. Our spirit strong. So that when the time of crisis, when a difficult time will come or hit our life. We will stand strong. We we will stand on our ground, hold our ground, and stand strong. Like Paul the Apostle in the next 20, he said, Nothing move me. None of these things move me. Persecution awaits me in Jerusalem. Trouble awaits me in Jerusalem. I will be arrested. I will be put into prison, Paul is saying. But he said, None of these things move me. And now that, is, that is the kind of life that we need to live. And we can live like that when our spirit man is built strong in the Lord. Can I hear an amen there? Amen. Hallelujah. Now we are, we are living in this world. It's a, it's a real world. But it's a fallen world. And we will, even how strong a Christian you are, or how mature a Christian you are, you still will experience troubles and problems in your life. So we need to keep our spirit man strong. Um, I just want to share a little bit uh, today with the time that I have. Uh, some of the signs of a weak spirit, some of the signs of the strong spirit. Right? I, I cannot go into everything here, but I will just pick up uh, some of the outlines here uh, to have uh, the signs that we need to see and look uh, in, in our life. Whether we have a strong spirit or a weak spirit. Spirit. Um, last week we read about um, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. said spirit, soul, and body. Uh, we have a spirit, right? We, we, we have a body. We live, we live in our body. We have a soul. And we are a spirit. We are a spirit. And that is who you are actually. So you need to spend more time. In building your spirit man in the Lord, actually more than anything else. And that is by reading the word, spending your face or in your countenance. People can see whether you have God in you, working in you. I want to touch a little bit about a few things, uh, the signs of the weak spirit. What are the signs when a person has a weak spirit? Number one, overwhelm. A person can easily be overwhelmed with things in life in proverbs 24 10 proverbs 24 10 that you can memorize this it's good uh, because you need to uh, sometimes remember this word in your life it said if thou faint in the day of adversity thy strength is small so overwhelmed a lot of people sometimes even in little things in in a little situation they will be overwhelmed uh, easily they cannot handle simple things in the translation of God's word this is one of the translation it says if you faint in a crisis you are weak so people can see you have a weak spirit because you fall you faint you are broken in a crisis in the message translation it says if you fall to pieces in a crisis there wasn't much to you in the first place. But let us be like the psalmist. It says in Psalm 61 verse 2. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, 
Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So the psalmist know what to do when he is overwhelmed. He asked God, he said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So we need, we need to do that. We need to take action when, when we face that kind of situation. We know when we, are, when we get overwhelmed easily, we know that there is something wrong with our spirit. Let us run to God. Let us build our spirit in God. Spend time in prayer. Run to the, to the Lord. Spend time with His Word. Wow. Hallelujah. You know, it, it is interesting because I've been doing this for some time. Uh, meditating God's word by memorizing some of the verses, some of the scriptures. Um, I really feel the difference later on in my spirit. I, I feel the difference in my uh, spiritual life. I, I felt that there is a strength that is being added to me in my spiritual life. I feel some kind of freshness. Sometimes when I teach and I preach, I feel so different from the ordinary. It's different. So when we need to learn, you know, to, to run to the rock that is higher than I. He said, Lord, if my spirit is overwhelmed, when your spirit is overwhelmed, ask God to lead you to the rock that is higher than you. And the rock is Jesus Christ, of course. Number two is hopeless, a feeling hopelessness, a sign of a weak spirit, lack of joy, discourage, despair. Uh, in Proverbs 13 verse 12, Proverbs 13 verse 12, uh, this is an amplified version. He said, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. Proverbs 15 verse 13, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of, of the heart, the spirit is broken. So when you see sorrow in faces, sorrow of the person, the heart, their back down and all, you know that their spirit is broken. Right? You know their spirit is broken. But it's in a merry heart. A heart that is healthy will sing. A heart that is healthy will have joy. Uh, they, they, they be merry. <clears throat> he said it will make a cheerful countenance. So a healthy spirit, a man who has a healthy spirit, a spirit that has been developed, a spirit that is strong, it will have a cheerful countenance. They will be always smiling. Even they will be smiling in the midst of the storm, in the midst of problem and all. They will be smiling. Hopelessness. So number one is uh, overwhelm. Number two is hopelessness. Number three is self-centered. A person who have a weak spirit, they are always self-centered. They only think about themselves. Only think about themselves. They want to grab everything for themselves. Me, 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 my, my, my. I, I, I. Uh, usually they will have no compassion. People have, who are self-centered, they have a victim mentality. They, they blame everybody else. They, bl they blame everything. You know, they blame the weather. They blame their wife. They blame their husband. They blame their dogs, they blame their cats, they blame everything. These are people who are self-centered. Romans 15 verse 1 encourages us to, he said, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities or the weakness uh, of the weak and not to please ourselves. We need to be strong. We need to be a place where we can help other people, where we can build and encourage other people. Only the strong can do that. Don't be self-centered. If you feel that you begin to be self-centered, then you need to go for checkup. You know, you need, you need to go to the Lord and, and check yourself, check your spiritual temperature. Because there is a problem with our spirit. Number four, complacency. People who are weak in the spirit, they feel complacent. They said, we are like this. They live in mediocrity. Double-minded. Usually they make wrong decision. Uh, people who are indecisive. They are indecisive. One day they say like this. Another day they make decision like this. They cannot decide. They cannot decide. Whether they want to make cake or they want to make cookies. No proper decision. Complacent. 
Romans chapter 4 verse 20, 21. Talk about Abraham. He said he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But was strong in faith. Giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. That what he had promised he was able also to perform. Now, I don't know if you were in the place of Abraham. They have been praying for a child. And they now they, are, they, they grow age. They are really old. But they, the Bible says Abraham, he did not stagger at the promise of God. Because God promised him a son. <clears throat> he did not stagger at the promise of God. But was strong in faith. We can say that also that Abraham is strong in his spirit. Because he can hold on to the promise of God. Now you can try this in your, in your life. To hold on to the promises of God. Many Christians they give up. They pray one time, two times asking for God. And looking for the promises in the scripture. But they prayed and prayed. Nothing happened. They give up. You know, they, 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 they make up their mind. They say, oh maybe God does not want to give me this. So I give up praying. No, Abraham did not stagger. Through unbelief. But was strong in faith. And giving glory to God. Before he had it, he gave glory to God. That is the language of faith. Praise is a language of faith. You have not received that. You have not received the promise of God. But you thank God for it. Now I do believe some of the things that we pray. Some of the things that we are believing for our life. For our legacy. For our family. For our children and all. Some of these things we will not receive it when we are alive. A lot of things we will receive. Things that we have prayed for now. We will only receive that when we die. And our children will see. It. Our friends will see. It. They will say, hey, I remember that he prayed for this before. I remember that he prayed this before. And now he is no more. He is dead. But God answered his prayer. Abraham, give glory to God. He did not stay on the promise of God, but give glory to God, believing God that what He had promised, He would also perform. Do you believe that? I believe, I, I've been praying for a lot of things in my life. I have not received them. I have not seen them. But I just give God glory. I praise God for those things. Hallelujah. Even for the church building. I've been praising God and thanking God. I said, God, I thank you for the church building. We have not seen it, but I know that you will give it. Sometimes I visualize, you know, envision the building, you know, the design and all of that. Believing God answer prayers. So believe God. But those who don't believe, those who live in unbelief, because they have weak spirit, they will live in complacency. They will be satisfied with what they have. They will be satisfied. If God just open your eyes and you can see the future. You. Who you will become in the future. I think you will change your life now. Because who you are in the future in the eyes of God. In God's plan. In God's design. It's so different. And so far different than what you can imagine now. Amen? Amen. It's different. A lot of successful people today thought that we have achieved it. We have arrived. And this is what we are. But if they can just see actually what God's plan for them is much much greater than what they are now. What you are now. God's design for you is far much much greater. Number five. Weak spirit also are short tempered. Short temper. They are very sensitive. They can get offended easily. They can get out of control. They can go into rage and anger. Uh, Proverbs 16 verse 32. Proverbs 16 verse 32. Well, we have somebody singing there. yeah. Proverbs 16 32. The Bible says, He... Who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit 
than he who takes a city. He said, he who is slow to anger is better than a mighty. I mean, what's, what's the point to be a mighty man but cannot control an anger? Number six, fearful. Those who have weak spirit are fearful. They are panicky, worry, full of anxiety. But the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And then number seven, exhausted, can get easily exhausted. Those who are weak in spirit, they can get exhausted, tired, they're weary, stressed out, they're drained out. They have this inability to resist. Exhausted. So these are, these are some of the signs of a weak spirit. You can check yourself. If you have these symptoms, you know, it's time to run to the Lord and spend time with God in prayer. Now, a lot of Christians, they cannot grow in, in a higher dimension. They cannot grow in a higher level in their spirit life. Why? Because they are just lazy. They, they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to pay the price. So they cannot move to a... To their destination, they will be the same. Even for many, many years, they still be the same. I want to give you some of the signs of a strong spirit quickly. Right? Strong spirit. Number one, they are assured and confident. They have this sense of assurance and confidence. Like David. <clears throat> Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9 and 13 and 14. Paul says we are troubled on every side. I love this one. Paul is a great apostle. Of course he has a strong spirit, confidence and assurance in his life because he knew his God. Paul says we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. <laughs> wow. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Verse 13, 14. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. So the same spirit, those people who have the same spirit like Paul the Apostle, who live a lifestyle like Paul the Apostle, who knew their God, who have this, uh, this assurance and confidence in their life because of God in their life, because how, how they build themselves in God. We will confess the same thing. Confess the same thing. We have trouble on every side, but not distressed, perplexed, but not despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. The same confession we will confess <clears throat> if we have the same spirit of faith built in the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, we will be established and we will not be moved when you have a strong spirit. I, I give you an illustration like a lion last week. A lion will never be moved when, even when faced even how big the enemy uh, compared to him. But the lion will stand and will keep his ground. Psalm 112 verse 7 and 8. He shall not be afraid of evil things. A man with a strong spirit shall not be afraid of evil things. His heart is fixed. <coughs> trusting the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. Until he see his desire upon his enemies. If you remember Stephen, when they were stoning Stephen, Stephen kept on preaching. Even Stephen prayed for his persecutors. And Stephen looked up to heaven and he saw the heavens open and he saw Jesus standing there. Wow. That is a man who is a strong spirit. Not move. Not move. Really established in the Lord. Paul the Apostle, Acts 20, 24 again, he says, None of these things move me. Persecutions that waits for me in Jerusalem, prison that waits for me, all those soldiers will wait for me to arrest me. He said, None of these things move me. Wow, very interesting. 
a character that is being built, a developed spiritual man will not be moved. Wow. Will not be moved. Number three, a strong spirit is ready for anything. Ready for anything. Why? Because they have strength in God. Philippians 4.13 For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the Amplified, it reads like this. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Wow. Number four, a strong spirit will have an overcomer's attitude. We are an overcomer. The Bible says we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus in Romans. Romans 8.37, he said, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. 2 Corinthians 4.17, it says, For our light affliction... <coughs> Those who have grown in the Lord, those who have been established in Christ, who have developed their spiritual men, affliction, it's a light thing to them. He said, for our light affliction, Paul the Apostle talked about the persecution. Paul the Apostle talked about shipwreck. Paul the Apostle here talked about when he was stoned, when he was put in the prison, when he has to be in fasting, not because of no food, but because he was always on the run. But he said, in our light affliction, that is what affliction to Paul is. The affliction was like prison, stoning, destitute, become a fugitive. To Paul, he says, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far exceeding an eternal weight of glory. <laughs> Number five, those who have a strong spirit, they will, they will be calm and steady. When everybody is panicking, they will be calm and steady. Number six, they will not be easily giving up. And they will not quit. Those who have a strong spirit. They will stand their ground. Hebrews 10.32 Remember those earlier days after you had received the light. When you stood your ground in great contest in the face of suffering. Again that is talking about persecution in the early church. It's not like today. You know when a Christian you know, somebody gossip about them. They said that is persecution. When somebody, you know, talk about them, they said that is persecution. No, that is not persecution. That is nothing compared to the early church when they were persecuted. But here, the writer of the Hebrews says, they stand their ground in a great contest in the face of suffering, in the face of persecution. They stand their ground. Wow. The devil thought that the Christian will be put in fear and they will surrender their faith. They will give up their faith. You know, they will, you know, deny Jesus and all of that in, by sending this persecution. Kill them, you know, destroy them, burn their churches and all. But no, he just proved to the devil that when they persecute the Christian, the Christian will stood their ground. Those who are built strong in the Lord. And number seven, those who have strong spirit, they will have full of joy and peace. Joy and peace. Remember, last week I shared to you, Jesus was sleeping, you know, in the boat when they faced these storms and the waves beat upon the boat and waters came to the boat and almost sank the boat. But Jesus was sleeping there in peace. But it just, the disciples were panicking and crying out. He said, Lord, don't you care that we perish? But Jesus was sleeping. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Nehemiah 8.10 He says the joy of the Lord is 
your strength. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. He said, be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. Those who have a strong spirit, these are the signs that will help compared to the weak spirit. So with these comparisons, you can ask yourself, do I have a strong spirit or do I have a weak spirit? We are still here. We, have, we still have a lot of time to invest in our spiritual life. Don't waste time. Pray regularly. Read the Bible every day. Meditate on it. Eat the Bible. Meditate on the Word. Spend time with God. Go to church. Find a fellowship. Find a fellowship. Go to church. Be faithful with the church that you have. Be faithful. To church. Invest in the church. Live in the community of the church. Be attached to a fellowship. This is one of the ways to build your spirit strong. But in your own personal time, read the Bible. Pray to Jesus. Spend time with God. You know, a lot of people, they spend time with their handphone every day. The whole day. Uh, they do a lot of things in the handphone. I don't have to mention that. You know it. But if you spend time in prayer, but those times prepared me for today. And today prepare me for the future. So you need to live your life for Jesus. Praise God. I want to end here. I want to encourage you time to receive Jesus. I saw a video yesterday. Uh, one of the young doctor, one of the young doctor in Indonesia uh, is attending with a patient and um, then he, he got infected with the virus. And there is a short video of him talking to the people and friends, encouraging the frontliners uh, to, to be strong and all of that. You know, he was smiling. He was a Christian, this young doctor. He was a Christian, but he was smiling, telling them to be strong, you know, to keep safe and all of that, to trust in Jesus. You know, that, that, that video before he died. But then after that, uh, he passed away. Young doctor, you know, but he was a Christian. You know, we, we don't have to wait for tragedy to come into our life and we turn to the Lord. Turn to Jesus now. Give your heart, give your life to Jesus. Repent of any sins that you have right now and live straight. Live with Jesus. Surrender to Jesus. Believe Jesus in your life. You will not regret and spend time. Invest in your spiritual man, spiritual life so that God will build you strong. So whatever crisis, whatever difficulties that will come into your life, you will be able to stand strong. Hallelujah. Praise God. Next week, I will continue. Maybe that's the last session for next week uh, in this series, Building Strong Spirit in Difficult Time for next Sunday. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay at home. And pray. God bless you. Good day.